to the debut episode of the Taco Summit. I am Max Booth, and today I am joined by a couple of knuckleheads. Dude, that's yeah, fucking right. offensive. <laughs> to who? You're in my house, man. <laughs> my dog is here. That's offensive to my dog. I haven't seen a dog since I came in. That's the way we like to keep it, man. Just keep them outside. It's stuffed. Even one of those guys <laughs> who, like... Has an imaginary dog. <laughs> uh, everyone had a imaginary dog. A few times, I mean, you see him on sitcoms. In the past times. ten years, have you met someone who has an imaginary dog? Yeah, man. You know, I've actually seen someone walk. You know those like invisible dogs on leashes. Oh, those prank yeah. leashes. I've seen that at yeah. the grocery store, and I'm not like, I'm, like within the last five years. So in my adult life, yeah, I've seen it. And uh, then I just murdered the person. It's like, you're not funny. Nobody cares about you. Die. <laughs> what did you do with the dog? <laughs> I'm picking up and shit five times a day. Now, man. <laughs> Those invisible dogs, no one ever tells you, man. They shit a lot. Just Wait, you saw someone in a grocery store with a leash? Just dragging a leash? No. No, no, but it's like uh, erect. At the, at, oh, the end, at the end, you know, kind of like, <laughs> kind of slopes upward. So it's like, you know. In the it's oh, I got you. Like a right, comedy right. And there's a yeah. hardened noose where the collar would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've yeah. never seen that in person. You've never seen yeah. it, dude. You, probably, you could probably hit some somebody with TV it. Shows, you probably heard probably, it. But. Get somebody with it. Yeah, you probably could. What, 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 so, I'm Andrew Hobart, and you are? I'm Trey Hudson. Trey Hudson. Trey, what'd you bring us today? I brought you some tacos from Taco Deli Incorporated, LLC, trademark. Since 1999. Are you, do, you, oh, do you own a part, a part in this? <laughs> you you currently no, they did, they, did give me some free, they did give me some free chips and queso, so oh, man, I'm going to so give them a shout out. They kind of sponsored this show then. They, they kind of did, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> I wish I would have told them. Maybe they would have gave us the tacos for free, too. We should do but, that next time. Well, hey, man. Try to... Try to yeah. <laughs> Try we, to we might, off this bad idea. Yeah, we might give you one free customer and like give us thirty dollars worth of free tacos. Yeah, I mean, if know? I'm if I'm driving to Austin, we should definitely make something out of it. Yeah, we should. I mean, this probably cost them what to to make them to make. Yeah, exactly. Maybe like five bucks. And they just okay. found some meat on the road. <laughs> it cost them nothing. Right. They gotta pay the guy to go hit. Like find animals to run over. Yeah, they have to pay for the that. shovel. Well, I, I can donate an invisible dog to them. So. <laughs> oh man, that's pretty good. It's not bad. You got some beef. I actually got some fish. I got some veggie stuff. Wow, uh, combination of many things. Yeah, We're running true. the gamut here. Mm-hmm. Oh, rest in peace, gamut. <laughs> 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 so the idea of this podcast, there's no idea. I haven't given it much thought. I don't think you have, Andrew. Uh-uh. Just the idea of a taco summit is... I don't know who came up with the name. I think it was Bobby or you. Um, I, one of us in the group in the group messages in which only you or I ever respond to. <laughs> um, so, so, well, I, th- I think I came up with it. Just, okay. I'm going to be that. Yeah, fuck so Bobby. He's not you. Know, hey, come down to radio. We'll have a taco summit. Gabino came... Uh, Bobby Hilliard, you might know him as Robert Dean. Um, he came, and Max came, and I came, and we all had a good time sitting outside radio, drinking beer, and eating tacos. And uh, shout Matt, out to Veracruz. Veracruz tacos are the shit. Uh, we're eating Taco Deli, which are the shit too, but you know, it originated over Veracruz tacos. And um, I think, I think uh, we had this idea that we'd be able to do this again, but corralling as many riders as you can. The taco center is harder than you think in Austin because tacos are fucking everywhere and riders are assholes. <laughs> you hear that, Gabino and Bobby? <laughs> Respond to all <your> messages. <laughs> but yeah, because riders are also bullying, the only thing they seem to talk about is writing and what they've read recently. Yep. So since that's what we talked about every time we met up, why not make it a podcast? Maybe someone might listen to it. Yep. Honestly, maybe we might get free tacos out of it. I think next time we could get some free tacos. I think so, definitely. I was hoping to get free tacos anyway. I fucking work for Taco Deli. That's a caveat to all this. Yeah. <clears throat> sort of. They I'm an independent contractor. Tacos? Well, I just, they contract me out to sell their tacos on the weekends yeah. at farmer's markets. So I'm more of like a hired gun. You know what I mean? So basically. Just rolling the town, the tumbleweeds rolling. I'm coming through, got tacos in the holsters. That's Got disgusting. some salsa out of something else, you Are know? Are they wrapped up or just 
fucking loose tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> I just got, tor- got, got a tortilla belt. <laughs> It depends on how I'm feeling, man. A tortilla skin boots. <laughs> it depends on it depends on how. A tortilla I face up. mask. Dude. You just have a pocket <laughs> full of queso. <laughs> you want some queso shell, on that? Hard shell cowboy hat. Oh, that might be something. So uh, let's do a brief intro of what we do. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. Um, I'm Andrew Hilbert. I um, I write weird stories. My latest book was from. Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, who the publisher is sitting right across from me, licking queso oh my, out of his my God, out of his hearty mustache, that invisible dog. giggling and <laughs> wiping his mouth. Uh, my, uh, the Invasion of the Weirdos, you can get it anywhere. I'm also doing Dear Man. It's a it's a podcast serialized. Uh, it's a directionless serialized novella, which means it's not really a novella. It's just serial serialized bullshit. But uh, yeah, that's me. All right. Um, I am the creator, editor of Match 8 Magazine, or was formerly Match 8 Magazine. I think it's disbanded at this point. Oh, shit. New project in the works called the Cockroach Conservatory. It's just a refined version of Match 8. Some tweaks. Make it more legit. Do it less often. Bring up the quality a bit. Um, And also trying to write short stories for the first time ever. How's that going? It's going okay. It's kind of like, I feel like I'm on a roll, and then other shit will happen, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'll come back to that. So it just sits. Things sit a little bit, but I feel like I got some good ideas do about you, stories to write. Do you read a lot of short stories? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I read a lot of short stories, novels, poetry. Um, I'm kind of... Uh, new to the game of trying to publish anything, so yeah, um, that's been a process in which Andrew has been helping me out with. Yeah, I told him, look, <clears throat> three cents a word, man. Woo-hoo-hoo! You can get rich! What lessons have you been giving him? Um, basically, oh, basically, I just take your status updates about what not to do <laughs> and say, hey, Trey, dude, follow this, because I, I can't have any more competition. Yeah, because you don't do social media, right? Mm-mm. So no, you know, what do you print them out? Uh, yeah, I print them out, frame them, give them to them. It's like, look, that is exactly. I'm what up you on mean. the email. I mean, I got an email. Yeah, yeah. I got an electronic mail account. See, so you should. I, that seems where that seems to be where things are going, anyways, right? Where everyone has a Mailchimp. I, yeah, I know a couple of writers are doing new, newsletters rather than social media. But that's what we do. And that's what Perpetual does. At full, so we have about three thousand subscribers, maybe three to five hundred open it anytime I send anything. Yeah. In. Neville, Neville, all of them. Half of them, Russian pillin' bots, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm convinced most of them will actually MailChimp, because the more subscribers I get, the more I have to pay. Right. So I think they just fucking send fake accounts to subscribe, so well, I have I, to pay them all. That, that seems like it'd be a lawsuit somewhere. Well, you have to pay for subscribers? Once you get a certain amount. Like, once mm. you get past 2500 you have to do, like, a subscription fee. Nice. So, Max, what do you do? What's your What's your life about? I don't, I don't need to introduce yeah, myself. You gotta, you gotta tell us, man. Listeners know all about me. Tell us. It's, uh, it's more than well, just tell laptops. Trey here. It's more oh. than just open laptops and erections. I know that. Is <laughs> what about the erection? Huh? Nope. What? My uh, My name is Max. <laughs> <laughs> I do the small press, Perpetual Motion Machine. I do a podcast about Stephen King books called The Castle Rock Radio. And I live in San Antonio. A little small town outside San Antonio. How do you pronounce that anyway? Cibolo. Cibolo. I was going to say Chibolo. Or yeah. Chibolo. Oh, I also do a night shift at a hotel. And anytime anyone comes to the hotel, they always mispronounce the name. Yeah. So, Cibolo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so you, Castle Rock is going um, once a week now. Yeah. Dude, what the fuck are you doing to yourself? I don't know, man. We had a Patreon goal. If we reached 300 a month, yeah. we would begin doing it once a week. I didn't think we would reach it, and we, we finally did. Yeah. I mean, there's so many goddamn things that we could talk about. That Stephen King has written. So yeah, we're not gonna run out of material. Yeah, and he's not like stopping anytime soon. Don't say that, man. He just yeah. died. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> like as soon as you said that, he <laughs> got a Twitter <laughs> update. Stephen King dead. There was a solid silence there for like half a second. I actually was scared. I was like, man, I I haven't checked my notifications in a while. Maybe he did die. It's gonna make it awkward once he does. Like, do I continue the show? Oh yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's of course. what I thought. Yeah, like, what if he what it if it comes out? He's a rapist. Oh well, <laughs> well maybe you don't continue in that. Then what if cover, he dies? You yeah. cover the coverage, man. You talk about the fact yeah. that he's a rapist. I mean, that'd be a good final episode. Our hero's gone. Stephen know. King. He's still alive, but he's, he's a rapist. rapist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be a lot of wasted time, man. We're we'll doing t-shirts now. We have like a thousand sickles made. What would I do with them all? Well, there'll always be a backlash, you know. There'll be like a, a group of like um, right-wingers on the internet. <laughs> that, I love rapists! <laughs> and then they'll buy all your merch. Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure that's a website of some type. I love the rapist. <laughs> Just a list of everyone who's raped. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible, dude. You gotta edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing goes out. <laughs> um, All right. Um, tell me about your podcast. How did that begin? Um, dear man, I just wanted to do. I mean, you know, I saw a bunch of people doing Patreons. And I was like, man, how can I? How can I get some of this free, sweet money? <laughs> and I uh, started writing. Well, Dear Man, I, I actually had as an idea when I was a kid. Um, because I thought all the good superheroes were taken, all the animals. Yeah. And what's like the next best animal that's actually not that cool. But if you're scraping the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the barrel, you'd get a deer. And so I thought, Dear Man, let's do it. And uh, the story evolved a little bit. But um, it's still... Just as stupid as any fucking seven year old who thought of it would be. Do you ever see an end to Deer Man? Are you like this? No, is, I, I this know, is your life. I know how it's gonna. This is your. This is your. You're gonna keep. You're gonna keep it rolling. Like I, I know how it's gonna gonna end. But the good thing is, like it can it, it can be as bloated as it wants, and I can end it at any point because I know exactly what's gonna happen at the end. What? Tell us. No. <laughs> you have to. Just, you have to pr- pledge a dollar. Have you thought about adding a sidekick named Doughboy? No, I haven't. Doughboy. D O E. Oh, oh hey, dude, that's, that's good. Sweet. He's made out of dough. That's sick. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, man. That's uh, really I, might, good. I might take that. You weren't you? Did, didn't we? Weren't we gonna do a crossover? Uh, the hotel and the deer. Yeah, man, we need to do that. Let's do it. We still gotta eat it. Eat it. <laughs> it eats dick. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting on you. I know. This was taking so long. I don't know. I've been too busy clobbering dick, dude. <laughs> so speaking of dick, we could talk about that. What? The dick? <laughs> yeah, it eats dick. It eats dick, yeah. We could also talk about the performance we all did yeah. a few months ago. How did that come along? Come about? Come about. Uh, the It came... I saw Isaac Kirkman and Danny Gardner were going to come visit Gabino. Mm-hmm. And me just... You know, I was like, hey guys, I can, I can book a show for you. And... Uh, Kind of wait on it for a little while, and then uh, realize that readings are really fucking boring, and oh, yeah. no, and nobody likes going to them. Uh, so I, I came to Trey one night because we worked together, and I was like, Dude. it was right before a shift. It was, yeah, it was right, right before the shift. It was probably like three weeks out. So like, I have no idea what the fuck I'm gonna do for these guys. And you're like, let's make it like Clue, the board game Clue. And then we came up with the title "Who Killed Andrew Hilbert" and just like wrote wrote it basically at work. Yeah, yeah. just said on a Tuesday night is yeah. slow enough you can do shit like yeah. that. Yeah, you, you, you coffee you, and beer, man. Come you check were, us out Tuesday yeah. nights. You were kind of the mastermind of the whole like, you, you were the mastermind of the whole thing, and for me it was like great because I got to host a show without actually hosting a show. Yeah, but you. It was more of a refining it together. Yeah, being like, okay, how are we gonna make all of this fit? Because little shit would get tossed out like, you should impersonate me. It was just yeah, an idea right, yeah. out of nowhere. And it's like, why would I impersonate you? Okay, I would impersonate you because I'm a fucking terrible actor who thinks that all these people are screenwriters, not novelists. <laughs> yeah. So this is the only reason why I would agree <laughs> to this. So it's really like these insane ideas getting thrown out and being like, okay, we can make this work together. Yeah. yeah. Let's make the story fit these fucking ideas. And you, for some reason, were so hell bent on me shaving your mustache. Yeah. You're like, dude, you, should, you gotta shave my mustache. And I was like, all right. Dude. 
let's make it happen. Well, and part we got to really make it work at the end. Yeah. Part of it, too, is because he prides himself on doing good impersonations of people, right? Yeah. And I, I asked another coworker, he's like, so does he have an impersonation of me? And she was like, yeah, he does. <laughs> and he would never fucking show me the impersonation. He wouldn't. I don't have one. And you still don't have one. I really don't so this was a kind of way for me to get my way and see how you did it. Nice. It was an excellent impulsion. I think it was. Yeah. How much time did you take to prepare? Did you just practice at your house? Like, we pacing? practice here, did we? We practice here a couple times. Yeah. It was mainly like right before the show. We practice in the dry storage. We're like, yeah. let's make sure that we got the beats, like the moment that yeah. we would respond to one another. And there was one moment on stage where we both were like, <laughs> what happened? What is yeah, gonna yeah, happen yeah. next? And you're like, "Well, fuck you." Yeah. <laughs> it was, oh, what's it was to happen? Uh, I don't remember. No, I don't remember at all. I mean, it, nobody it, knew because it, we were the only ones yeah. who knew what was going on. And honestly, for me, it's like, dude, that show was pretty packed it was for for packed. a reading. Because I think part of the thing was nobody knew what what it was, and right. so when the Chronicle put it put who killed Andrew Hilbert and all that when they wrote about it. I think people thought it was going to be some kind of big production and not like a reading. <laughs> so it worked out for everybody, yeah. you know. And I think people sold books. I don't know. How many, did you sell any books? All the two. readings. You sold two books. Yeah. Dude. See, that's all that's, the readings were fucking amazing. Yeah. Dude, Rhea that was, sold a lot. Yeah, she did. Um, I have a friend Zach that was out there, and he's a publisher uh, himself, but he does like anthologies mainly, and he you know went up to her and. She she did very well and and hopefully she comes back to Austin and hopefully we can do more with her and trick more people into coming to a reading. What would be the next name? Like you can't fill someone with that one now. Mm. No, it no. Needs to. Well, okay, so the musical. Let's bridge the gap. Let's what? talk about this. <laughs> it eats dick the musical. Yeah, man. There we go. Dear man, the musical. It eats dick the musical. So I want to do a show that's crafted like a benefit. Okay. Like, like, make a fake fucking charity. I'm down. Make people think that they're coming out for this badass cause. Fucking and then they show realness. up, and then you're just like, I don't know if these people are serious or not. Like, actually believe it. Like, really believe that you're doing a good thing. and go. Like, if anyone questions it, just be like... You know, it's hard to question in that situation. Like, we're raising money for this... This you, but you know who does question? We're gonna save the cockroaches, and then you're in here saying that this isn't real. You know who doesn't have a hard time questioning those kind of things? Who? The IRS. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, oh, you made three dollars and fifty cents trying to save some cockroaches. Let me see. Let me see that organization. <laughs> a, thousand, a thousand men a year mutated in a deal. There we go. There you go. Blue done. Well, do, well you like, do you like a leprosy of realness thing and we all just get makeup? Like, we have leprosy. Chop a, lop off a fucking finger. <laughs> Shaking hands. <Yeah. laughs> just any disease that's been virtually cured, let's just act like it's yeah. back. Yeah. You know, it, it's only contagious three times a month and this is a... Uh, Oh, yeah, this is, uh, I think this is, uh, in what between is one of those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do this, you know, the thumb thing. Oh, God. But no, I want to do it. I want to do it. Have readings, have music, have It Eats Stick the Musical, have Dear Man the Musical. That's, Maybe. That's the way it's Just going. one act. One act plays, dude. Just dude, one well, little short thing. Here's the thing. If we, if we do a reading and we do, like, a music. <laughs> This is actually a pretty good idea. This is this is how Who, Who Killed Andrew Hilbert came about anyways. Mm-hmm. We can have a, like a reading thing. So we can do a benefit and a reading thing. But each each um, each break is is a song. You know, where... Because if you've seen those telethons where they have like... Everyone calls in and they yeah. have performers and stuff. Well, you can have the host do like a fake telethon kind of thing. Have a screen. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like, and now we're going to have... A, mus- a, a piece from the hit musical It Eats Dick and then have people come out with a song yeah, you know and perform See, it this is more feasible if you're talking like one song right craft one song for Dear Man yeah. craft one oh, song dude, the for song's already Eats written dick. dude a, a <laughs> fake 24 hour long t- dude a 24 hour long that's what I'm saying dude, that matches your that's other what I'm idea saying. Yes. <laughs> so I had another idea that that uh um, I want to make a movie called About Blank. Okay. Like, you know, about colon blank. When does it show up on the computer? Do you guys know? What are you talking about, dude? You sound like a crazy person. <laughs> what the fuck is it that you say so? <laughs> you sound like you've never looked at a computer, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
in the address line when you're about to type an address. Do you ever see that? What the Show fuck up? are you talking about? The word about colon blank all pushed together. No. No. Dude, I, mean, I think you have a fucking Russian Maybe virus. I had a dream about this. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's the, that's the name that I want it to be. But I want it to be about absolutely nothing as much as as much as we can. Just make a movie about nothing. Make it like two. Make it fucking two hours long. I want it to be long. 24 hours. You want to make it 24 hours? Well, let's, 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 do, it, let's do the real. Tw- let's do a 24 hour live stream thing. And then edit it down? Or no, no, no. But let, let, let's, let's do the musical thing so we can have a number of songs. We can do a 24-hour live stream for the Cockroach Conservatory or whatever. Yeah. Or leprosy. A Cockroach Conservatory fund. Yeah. And yes. we can and we can just do it. We can do it up and do, and have artists and, and, you know, other idiots like us come and do things. We can invite Bobby and Gabino to, to do something, too. But we can also just have, like, th- 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 those can be, like, uh, like built-in breaks. Because if they don't show up... <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. No, they'll show up. Get like costumes and people tend to be different in little tangles. Yeah. yeah. Like you shave half the mustache. Shave that. <laughs> I'm Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about it too is we have the space. There was someone asking us when we're going to do a show at the spot. And there's a lot of outdoor areas so you can blend it, like have the movie playing inside, mm-hmm. have all the shit going on outside. And there's yeah. no shortage of people that want to play music in front of people in this yeah. city. Yeah. Like anybody's down. Get a Sublime cover band. Dude. I, got, I got one. I think we can do that. We can make a Sublime cover band. How hard could Nobody it be? will do it. Make Bobby do it. Will do oh, it. Oh, dude. Bobby, you hear that? You're gonna be the um, you're gonna be the Bradley Noel of this Sublime cover band. <laughs> He's not listening. <laughs> He's not listening. I hope he not. Give a shit. Don't listen, Bobby. So I have a question for you. Yeah. The horror pizza anthology. Yeah. How'd that come about? Okay, yeah, I, uh, a few months back, back, no, it was sometime in last year, I co-wrote this thing with David James Keaton about a post-apocalyptic setting where a man who used to kill pizza delivery drivers meet a kid who used to be a pizza delivery driver, and they film a friendship. And we couldn't sell it any place, so we thought, well, you know what, we need to make this a book. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we just did an open call, and we're just going to put the one we wrote at the very end as like a special edition. Yeah. So really, it just began because we couldn't, no one else would accept the thing we wrote. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is a great, great concept. But yeah, uh, Tales from the Crest. Yeah. Still open until <laughs> submissions until June. How many submissions have you gotten? Uh, 120 or something. Oh, what? Wow. Yeah. That's so many. And the last one I did, Lost Films, I got like almost 300, I think. Wow. Oh, fuck. How many do you accept for things like this? It's like just 20? D- um, it depends on the build count because yeah. we pay by the build. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So whatever's within your budget. So right. To yeah. So we're going to accept about 80,000 builds for okay. this one because gotcha. we're paying three cents a build. Yeah. Gotcha. We've gotten a lot of shit though because yeah. we don't want it to be a goofy book. Like yeah. we want the the subject matter to be treated with complete sincerity. Yeah, yeah. But we're getting a lot of ha ha pizza. That's so wacky. <laughs> I've gotten about six submissions called Pizza Face. <laughs> they love that title. Whoa, that's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. Um. Well, I guess Pizza Face, Pizza Face by Andrew Hilbert isn't going to do that, man. <laughs> right. I might as well scrap that one, too. Uh, shit. Oh, you were Pizza Face 2? Yeah. Pizza Face well, 2? Well, Pizza Face 2. Oh, yeah. I would just... I would also. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love things that will sequel to something that do not exist. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Pizza Face nice. 2. Dude, there you I'm are. I'm just going to add a 2 open. to whatever story I already wrote. Dude. Yeah, man. I'm um, on the way in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I totally, whoa, whoa. I totally <laughs> forgot what the fuck I was going to say. Oh, that's not important. Life is meaningless. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It is. What was the last thing you guys read? Last thing I read was uh, I'm, pr- I'm 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 pretty I'm almost done with the troop by Nick Cutter. How do you like that? It's pretty good. It's like Stephen King. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's basically if, it, if Stephen King wrote that. I, you can tell that guy likes Stephen. Yeah, King. Yeah, you can tell he's a Stephen King fan. <laughs> he has a book. His last book was called. 
a little heaven, and it was so obviously just like an it ripoff. Yeah. Like it has two timelines. Like 20 years right. later, they go yeah. back to the same thing to fight the same thing they fought 20 years before. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It, it, it's it's okay. I mean, there's some gross out stuff, and there's some things that he describes really well, but in the end, it is a lot like a Stephen King book. Um, which is good if it was Stephen King, right? Yeah. I don't know. Do you not like it just because it's like a Stephen King book? No, I mean, it's or just. Or does uh, that idea that someone's like. Jock in somebody else's style just make you like, eh. No, I, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, because there's plenty of Stephen King books that I just think are like, whatever. Name one. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> oh, you like them all, huh? <laughs> no. Yeah, what, what was the other one I read? Oh, I, and I just finished, um... Uh, God damn. Eh, fuck it. Forget it. <laughs> Oh, uh, it was the Monkey Treatment by uh, the Monkey Treatment. Yeah, George R. R. Martin, which is basically like Quitters Inc. by Stephen King too. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But for fat people, so oh nice. Yeah. The last thing I read was uh, Zero Saints. Oh, how'd you like that? Um, I really liked it. Oh man, that would have um, been awkward if you said it was. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought it was really good, and what prompted me to buy that book was his reading yeah. at Who Killed Andrew Hilbert. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. Gabino Iglesias. Yeah. yeah, I was impressed by every reader, but he in particular definitely had a certain flow yeah. to when he was doing his reading. Where I was like, yeah. man, this really... It was all Spanish, really man. great. Like, I know, just, <laughs> there's something about it. Well, you could just tell he's been doing that shit for a long time. Yeah. You know? For sure. Like, I, don't, I don't know how many readings he's done, but... Did you buy it there? No, you bought it off. You bought it off the internet. Yeah. With I'm, way too about I'm way too blank. Dot com, <laughs> Amazon. I'm way too flustered after shows to do anything. Yeah. I, do, I feel, I don't normally feel super awkward, but any time there's a show, mm-hmm. I feel super awkward. Dude, now you know how it feels. Before and again. after, you're just like, okay, I got to get out of here. I just shared too much. I'm going to go now. But you were just yeah. being me. Were you like that horrified? And <laughs> and I had to go take a shower. I had to go take a shower with some fucking steel wool and a wire brush just to get that that feeling away. Dude, fuck you. <laughs> uh, it was an honor, actually, Andrew. Hey, man. Yeah. Um, what was the last thing you read? Uh, Death Wish by Brian Gullfield. Haven't read that. It's the novel that inspired the movie. Death, Death Wish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the movie's called Death Wish. Mm. Oh yeah. It was mediocre. Yeah. The ending is pretty different from the movie. Have you guys seen it? Long. Well, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not that good of a movie. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is about being a vigilante because his wife dies because someone breaks into the house and yeah. rapes and kills all. So he d- decides to take justice into his own hands. He buys a gun, he goes around New York City just shooting anyone who tries to mug him. <laughs> okay. it's, it's pretty bad. It's like NLA propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But in the movie, it, and he's killed a shit ton of people. The police are all on his side. Yeah. At the end, he gets shot trying to hunt down his latest victim. It's really like a slash old movie almost yeah. from the from villain's this, point yeah. of view. And he's in the hospital, and this cop who's been investigating him, he comes up. He's like, you gotta get out of this city, man. And they don't arrest him. He's like, he's like a Disney ending almost. Yeah. But in the book, you know, it's been out since 72. Yeah, this spoiler yeah. alert. In the book, he goes so fucking nutty. It ends with him spotting these kids, these children, throwing rocks at the train. He executes them all point blank range damn and what the fuck yeah and this cop sees him and he just like takes his hat off and looks the other way so the guy can go whoa what? even after he's just awesome yeah Dude, that's some fascist shit right there. right but i mean the guy who wrote it he's really like liberal and yeah. stuff he wrote it as a point to show how that shit doesn't look and it just yeah. fucks with you right but the movie kind of just went, oh yeah, let's shoot some criminals, let's shoot some minorities. Yeah, like fucking every Dirty Harry movie. Yeah, yeah. and I, yeah. I read it because the remake comes out tomorrow, and I was oh, writing true. a lit reactive article about yeah. the book. Yeah. And the remake is done by Eli Roth, so I doubt yeah. it's going to be any less tillable. Yeah. 
I don't and think Bruce Willis is a star, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of scenes where he has like a gray hoodie on. He's like, finally, someone's going to take justice into their own hands. Oh. The preview is just him shooting a bunch of black kids. Oh, my God. This what? is the movie we need right now. Is this a Dude, blockbuster this hit? Like, yeah, this is man. Movie. Yeah, tomorrow, Theodolds. Whoa. What the fuck? I, I, see, I, I haven't seen any trailers or anything. I just saw Bruce Willis <laughs> starring in the remake. I'm, a, I'm on the fence about this kind of shit because I want to go like... I want to see terrible that close up. Like I think it's important for you to know that some people feel this way, even if you yeah. don't. But I don't want to fucking give money to pirate it. To it, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like shit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pirate that. I, I would pirate it, but I keep running into this about colon blank. <laughs> have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen this? <laughs> you guys know about this? I was, I was. Dude, deep you're a Russian web. bot, dude. I was deep in the web. Were you in the deep web? What's I've never, have you been to the deep web? No, man. I've never been to the deep oh, web. Have you been to the deep is. web? I'm too I'm stupid. I think you have to download like a special browser. You download a special browser and you automatically get like <laughs> <it> Mozilla Firefox. <laughs> 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 Internet Explorer. Yeah. yeah. I. <laughs> yeah. Go back to Netscape, dude. I don't know, man. Like you can buy grenades. I. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, cocaine I, and grenades. My feeling about the deep web is that it's just a bunch of narcs. Yeah. It's just like a bunch of FBI agents saying, hey, Hello, kid, do you want to... It's got to be yeah. the, the <laughs> fact that we know about it yeah. like, says something, you know? Yeah. Well, it ain't that deep. One of the guys who uh, started the Silk Road, which is like a website on mm-hmm. the deep web, was in Austin. Like, he went to Austin High. Al uh, No. Uh, oh. What's his name? It's not, I don't know. He had some... Jack Wilson? No. <laughs> oh, it was... Uh, it, it almost sounded like a Germanic kind of name. Oh, man. But um, he was an Austinite, and he got arrested. You just going to put Germans out there like that? Well, I mean, it was like you know, it was like Lars or something like that. Oh, my God. Adolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think his last name was something like Hitler. <laughs> Goebbels. I can't remember. But he started so- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, oh, I think it was Budolf Dittler. Oh yeah, I knew yeah. him. Yeah, he was a he was, yeah. I he was a fucking his clown. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> get out of jail free Patreon. Um, yeah. So, do you have, do you have uh, any more tortilla chips? I don't, dude. There's well, tortilla chips right tortilla here. Tortilla chips in this bag. I see. I see a few, but um, <laughs> there's a lot of queso. Just drink it, dude. Like yeah, just get a spoon. Don't need you, a spoon you, yeah. you ever spooned queso? Mm-hmm. What are you, some kind of liberal? Mm-hmm. Oh man! Go, uh, watch, go watch Death Wish. <laughs> go watch yeah, Death right. Wish. Maybe it'll change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of this? Um, I've been obsessed with this idiot, John De La Rose. Yeah, man. Yeah. I was um, fucking with him on Twitter. I just uh, I, was, I just got done fucking with him on Twitter. Yeah. Because he he, he he said, "Oh, the free story on my Patreon this this month is a story that I submitted to a Christian magazine." They love the characters. They love the world, but they said it was too Christian for them. I'm proud of this story, and I'm proud that it was censored. It's like, dude, sounds like they're being nice in a rejection. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not censorship, you dumb. Do you think idiot. they said no? This is too Christian. That was the rejection. <laughs> yeah, right. No, well, like on. Christ. You guys gotta tell me who this person is. Oh, dude, it's just some. It's a guy. It's a guy. He's the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. Like that's, that's what he calls that's himself. That's what he claims. Yeah. And uh, he writes basically Trump fan fiction. I mean, the one thing I read of his was a, I, I didn't read it all because it was so bad. But it was like uh, from the perspective of Baron Trump, and uh, the you know the youngest Trump the son. Boy? Yeah, the boy. <laughs> I thought you meant like a Trump that couldn't have children. My town no. can have children. He's been around. <laughs> from a Baron. He's Trump. been around way too much radiation. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and Italian. And, and uh, he just basically thinks that like ev- like everything is censoring him because he's Hispanic, and he's um, he's a conservative who likes Trump. And it's just like, no, nah, dude, like, you just suck. Like you're a bad writer. Yeah, yeah. He, he only recently came to my attention because someone retweeted something he wrote about crisis axles in that recent trailer. Oh yeah, so that's yeah. when I began laying into him. I don't <clears throat> really know exactly who he is. Well, he's the, I mean. The, the, it's it works for him, right? Because we're talking about him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. But you can visit his website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said something like, uh, "Oh, I guess say I guess Twitter verifies crisis actors." Yeah. Now. And it was just like the, the victim of a school shooting who had a blue check mark because he's you know he got popular because he's you know advocating for gun control and it's just like dude are you jealous because you didn't get verified? But he has like a cross symbol next to his Twitter name. 
about colon blank. There we go. <laughs> That's how I find him. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he's just a, he's just a boner who just like thrives on um, thrives on being an asshole. Yeah. You know. But you know we get really bored on the internet, so I, I like to just shit on people I forgot every to, now and then. Oh, I forgot to give you the that fucking uh, sheet of paper from that museum in San Francisco, the International Museum. No, no, no. The International... No. You, you, you tell the story. Tell the story. It's, it's, it, I-M-I-A is the abbreviation for this museum. Oh. International Museum of fucking something art. Anyway... We get off the subway, Mm -hmm. the BART, in San Francisco, and we have to wait like an hour to check into our hotel, and we just saw this lady try and steal this bike from this dude at a stoplight because she had an emergency. She was (laughs) a vigilante. She was was wearing a gray hoodie, and then she just... Bruce Willis should have shot him in the face. (laughs) It was Bruce Bruce Willis in a wig, (laughs) is what it was. (laughs) But... Anyway, so we're like, where the fuck are we? What are we doing? Let's just go in the first place we see, and it happened to be this old church uh-huh. that got converted into a museum. We go in there. There's no information about anything. It's like no other museum I've been in. You can't. You have to go around the corner to get into the actual artwork. Mm-hmm. You have to pay there, so you don't really know what you're getting yourself oh, into before. It's a gamble. Yeah, we were like, fuck it. How 15, much was it? Fifteen dollars each. We, each we were in on this museum. And we get in there, and there's this really, like, uh, intricately designed fake Chinese garden. Like, okay, the, 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 it's like no water, but it's just painted blue. And, like, there's a little stream going through. And there's some video playing in Chinese that I couldn't really understand. But I just sat there and looked at the screen anyway because we had like an hour to kill. It was, was like, shit talking to cool. you, man. <laughs> yeah, right? So we get up to the upper level and we're like, introduces this something about this being uh, the Buddha, the third, third incarnation of Buddha nice. and all this shit. I didn't, and I was like, oh, wow. I didn't know that that was a thing in Buddhism. That you, that you could do this, right? Yeah. So we keep going into the museum. We see some like classical European <laughs> art in there, mixed with some like Asian art. And then it takes like forty five minutes to get through this museum. This place is huge. It's it's not that big, but they just like create like all these curves Amazing. where yeah, like you can't yeah. get out of it, right? And we start to figure out. That the shit is fucking Photoshop, dude. What? It's Photoshop. It's fake. Like, all the art. Like, not all of it. Some of it's real. Some of it's fake. I don't get it. It's like the most insane shit ever. Like, I thought it was an art installation. Yeah. Just to make you question whether or not it was real. Right? Because yeah. we're receptive people. We're in there, like, trying to <laughs> get, understand what's happening. And then we're like, wait a second. And we make it down... Uh, and we're the only ones in here, by the way, yeah. I should say. So it's starting to get a little eerie that for an hour we're the only ones in there, right? Mm-hmm. And then this small Asian woman comes up to me. She was also feather showers. <laughs> she, she was, yeah, right. <laughs> and she starts explaining to me before we could say anything. Yeah, some people think this is fake, but you know this this is just the you know the way Chinese art is. They use diff- a different type of paper. Okay. And then she asked me if I've seen the video, and then she switches it to English, and it's just some fucking propaganda bullshit. Oh, it was trying and to tell you. It was just trying to tell me that everything that I just saw was real art, and that this incarnation of Buddha has like mastered, became Buddha because he was just so good at art. Like he, nice. he just elevated above. The, I still believe it's an art installation or something. Some weird. San Francisco Dude, billionaire. So, anyway, you, you search this person's name. I can't fucking remember his name now. Yeah. But he's... It's some kind of, like, Buddhist cult. Nice. I guess every religion is prone to it. I wouldn't yeah. have thought Buddhism was one, but that's how little I know over here. Well, in Mian- the West. Myanmar, dude. The, the Buddhist government is killing Muslims over there. They're all... And they're, they, they follow that cult, so... 
that you should be happy, proud of yourself, <laughs> and you gave him 30 bucks. Yeah, right. Fuck, man. You just bought them a new AK for all these <laughs> On the black on market. The, on the deep Wait, web. On the deep web. <laughs> what was the website again, dude? About Colin Blank. That's how we get there. I would join the cult, I think. How about you? I, I was in a cult. What? When I was growing up, yeah. I've been dying to hear more about this, man. It's called, cult, you could watch The Simpsons, though. I could watch right. The Simpsons, yeah. Because my parents were really young when they had me. But, um, so, so my, my dad joined this cult. It was called the Worldwide Church of God. If you look it up on, on Wikipedia, it'll tell you some stuff about it. But it was a guy, it started by this guy named Herbert Armstrong. Okay. And, uh, he started, he had this radio church. And it was called the Radio Church of God. And he, uh... That name sounds familiar. Well, it was in, like, the 40s in California. I was around then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you look good, man. You're, Thank you. You're good. That's the case, though. Yeah. He, uh, and, and so he, he basically started this Christian cult that believed that the end of the world was coming. He knew the date. He can prove it with scripture and all that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. lo and behold, every date he predicted passed by. I didn't stop anybody from joining the church because my dad, I think he joined after each past apocalypse was supposed to be. Rejoined? Did you have to rejoin? No, like, did your no, contract no. contract end on that date and then you had to re-sign a contract? We, sorry, we're doing this again. Yeah, you got to come back in. <laughs> we we sucked the numbers a little bit. Yeah, um, we're working on it. They, uh, But yeah, so when I was growing up, so when I, until I was about like 10 or something, we were in this cult. We couldn't like celebrate birthdays, um, uh, holidays. Although my mom was still Catholic, so we still snuck around. But um, Halloween was terrible. And I just remember one time we were at like a Bible study, which was on Saturday. It was just, oh God, I just want to throw up. Why on a Saturday? Uh, it was just one it's of those weird things. Just to yeah, piss yeah. everybody it off. It was a true Sabbath. It was like basically, Saturday. Right? It was the black Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember the, 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 the teacher saying, you know, the people of this world, they love evil. They love Halloween. And they like watching The Simpsons. And my heart fucking dropped. It's like, oh, we're shit. fucking evil, it's dude. Like, oh. My, my dad are lets going me to watch hell. The Simpsons. Uh, <laughs> and it was last when I knew it was bullshit. It was when, when they said that, I was like, okay, this is done. It sounds Simpsons a lot like Southern Baptist. The Simpsons saved my goddamn life, dude. It sounds a lot like you were a Southern Baptist, dude. Well, Jehovah's Witness. That's the way yeah, it was. It was more like Jehovah's Witness than we Southern Baptist. We were fucking Baptist. like that, too. Like, uh, I remember when Harry Potter was coming out. Mm-hmm. The people that were in my church, like, my mom never took us. My dad never took us. Yeah. But when I was 13, I was like, you know what? The only we moved to a new town. The only friend I made was religious, and his family was religious. So I started going with him, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that church was like no dancing, right? <laughs> Did you leave him? No, <laughs> no, rock, yeah. no rock and roll music because it like gets your heart rate gives up. You, a boner. Yeah. you might, you no might, max. you might be in the car. But like one of the dads even said this. You might be driving on the road, you hear that rock and roll music, you turn it up, you know, your foot just goes a little more on the gas pedal, next thing you know, you're speeding down the road. Like, they truly believe that shit. Man, he has and Harry point. Potter, yeah. they were like, that promotes witchcraft. Which yeah, isn't, I've heard that before. Which isn't uh, about Jesus. And like, this is fucked because, what the fuck, dude? No sense of humor at all. Like, lighten up, man. Did, did you have any story. religious upbringing? Yeah, well, I didn't, but I have with my family did. Yeah. My, when my dad was a kid, his mother and sold the, the front door to a Jehovah's Witness who did the whole ding dong. And she brought <laughs> ding dong did <laughs> out of flaming bag of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. But now, those guys. She, yeah, she let them in, and the, like that day, she was a Jehovah's Witness all of a sudden. Dude. And the whole family just went to shit after that. Like, they had some money. My, my grandfather was a scientist. Yeah. He was on the team that invented fake level. Nice. <laughs> Blood, <laughs> Blather, level. Is yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, he was friends with the guy. No, his gra- his dad was friends with the guy who came up with Fritos. Damn. He, he, like, he had a chance to go in on it, but he was like, nah, that's stupid. What? <laughs> yeah, for real. That's a big mistake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank God he's dead. You could have been, you, you could have been a Frito <laughs> You could have been heir, a Frito man, dude. dude. I'm heir to the Frito Empire. Now you're just a pleather, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what they call yeah. So, yeah, man, uh, it just destroyed the family. The, um, they got the bills. Um, my dad's dad, he became an alcoholic and died, like, a few years after that from liberal poisoning. He just drank himself to death. All because of Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, man. I mean, she gave all the money to the church. Jesus. My dad had like seven revolts. <laughs> and they, they were all Jehovah's Witnesses. And when my dad was in his 20s, he was K- 
kicked out because yeah. he moved in with a, a lady. Yeah. And he wasn't really, like, and that was a that was a sin. Yeah. yeah. And they just all stopped talking to him. Completely. Like, they yeah. shun you. They can yeah. shun you in that religion. I think my grandmother visited like three times when I was alive. Yeah. And every time she wouldn't talk to him. If we ate like if we ate a meal, he had to sit in a separate room. It was fucked up. Dude, that's she, fucking that sucks. Yeah, well, she's dead, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. see you later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she's so having a grand she, old time she, in heaven. She though. lives in Dallas, too. <laughs> so. That's right. That's where I'm from, the Dallas area. So I, I know been, about that. Should have visited. Should. You should have visited Dallas when she was alive? Yeah, she died like last year. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I never, never visited at all. Well, it sounds like she sucked. And the bizarre turn of events, when I was a kid, she bought me the box set of Lord of the Rings, the novels. How does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. The leftover money from the church. Yeah. yeah. She wasn't even She wasn't even paying attention. No, she, she was, was like, old. let me get this. This is the first book that I could think of. This is yeah. hot right now. Let me get this. I have a memory of sending one of the things I had written like when I was like seven or eight. Yeah. It was about a ghost. I, we mailed it. to. She was in uh, Virginia at the time. Yeah. And she re- sent me back like all of these like you'll go in the hell pamphlets. Like you can't write about this. Really? And I was like, oh, okay. She's a crazy person. Yeah. Whoa. So my question about cults is the cult leaders must really believe it most of the time. I, I don't right? think so. You, you I think, don't think so. you think it's less frequent that they believe it and more frequent that they know they're fucking with everybody? So he, he, here's what I think. I think there's like a there's like a curve. There's like a bell curve, right? Yeah. Where they believe they believe that that, that they they found something that nobody else has found, right? And they're just schizophrenic. And, and, well, and they get some power and always with male cult leaders like that, you know, they they, they have this they have women come around them and they get this power, right? Yeah, yeah. And so they stop believe I mean, I think they stop believing it, but then they amass so much power and influence that they, they trick themselves into believing it again. It's like I must be on the right. I must be like, right. This it's always based on I should say like apocalyptic cults. Why don't they just set the end date if they know they're fucking with people for like 200 years? Yeah. Maybe they Just lose. don't ever have to Dude, deal with it. Just be like, you know what? The end of the world's not now, but think about your kids, your grandkids. Like 200 years from now, this shit's going to go down. That's where Christianity fucking kills it in the swindle game. It's like, <laughs> they don't give the you end of the world's going to come at it like a thief in the night. You know, no one knows where it's going to go. So going to happen. Yeah, exactly. exactly. They're, they're smart. You got to keep people yeah. on the hook. Yeah, smart. You got to keep people on the hook. Yeah. That's how you do it. St. Paul. Fucking con man. That's right. I, I think it's safe to say none of us are religious here. No, <laughs> no I'm a devout Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my house. <laughs> no, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they came to my house a couple times when I first got it. And I finally I said, I was just like, guys, I'm from my closed door, did you see that sticker? <laughs> You're on camera? <laughs> I'm never going to convert. Please stop coming. And so they actually skip over my house now. Oh my god, they're yeah. just masturbating. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, please stop coming. <laughs> <laughs> please stop coming. I, so no, I can't I'm see anymore. I'm joking off Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> I uh, I look with a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Wait, how does that how does that work out? Like, are they allowed to? Look. Well, I mean, like, are they allowed, <laughs> are they allowed so to work in a public? hotel where, where people are fornicating and stuff? Yeah, man. He's a he's an awful Jehovah's Witness. He plays uh, video games. He does. He's invested in Bitcoin, which has to be some type of sin. Wow, it's got to be, yeah. Uh, that's gambling right there. Yeah. He does um, a lot of games. He loves science fiction. I'm always giving him shit. Like, you can't do this, man. What will what your mom say? <laughs> How old is he? Like 21. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna fall off. Dude. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. But he does that thing like every weekend. He has to spend all day just knocking on doors. Dude, that's fucking. Sucks. Is that is that the deal? Like yeah. Yeah. you have to canvas for like forever, yeah. or do you have like is it like the military where you do it for four years and just every time and then you? Well, Mormons yeah. Mormons have like a two year ministry or whatever. Yeah, I knew about that. That's yeah. why they're always on mountain bikes in the city with. And they got the black. Ties and white yeah. shirts. At least yeah. they get a bike. Jehovah's Witnesses, they have to walk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they just, they park the car, man. Oh, and, yeah. but, and they, they can't drive, it. though. He doesn't have a license. Oh, so he's got to walk. He's walking. Dude. Why can't he, he just drive? knock on all the hotel doors? He's spend all his money in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he owe, he's given like 3000 bucks in the Bitcoin. And the he, he owes so much debt and credit cards he's taken out. Oh, my God. Oh, dude, stop doing this. I just feel bad for, for people who you can just watch 
fucking derail and there's really nothing you can do because it's not your life and the other yeah. thing is you're kind of interested to see how it all shakes out mm-hmm. he's always inviting me to come join him at the watchtower I'm like nah man what is that <laughs> so that's like the church oh they shit do. It's, it was a it's called the watchtower yeah it's, that's fucking spooky dude yeah, yeah it's um little buildings that have no windows at all if you look at them windowless buildings that is so fucked up yeah it's kind of awesome, like, someone designed this <laughs> crazy fucking tyranny, yeah. but people willingly join it. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, dude, dude, dude how, I mean, did, it's like, how does that Hubbard, even happen? You know? It's blowing like, my mind that that shit well, even happens. Well, you think about it, it's like the L. Ron Hubbard, right? The, yeah. the science fiction writer who was probably like John De La Rose or whatever. Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. And he started his own cult. It was Kevin like, Strange. This is the best. <laughs> Kevin- so what's Kevin Strange? <laughs> go ahead. Go, I, ahead. go Tell me about Kevin Strange. I will ask the initial thought. I forgot, dude. Science no, no, no. So, yeah, 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 so, so, so but, but what's awesome about these, these things that are totally not awesome at all in any way is that <laughs> The, the, the human capability of people to continually follow these people who failed at almost everything else in their life, basically. Yeah. And they start a church, and that's what hits. You know? What about Kevin Strange? Oh, he's just the same as um, the, the one guy. John Della Rose? Yeah, him. Yeah. Just some idiot, right ring, right wing idol who's always talking shit and saying the craziest Alex Jones type of material he can come up with. See, I I, I I know less about him, but I most people do. He, yeah. He's he's a waste of space. Yeah, yeah. they just reminded me of him when you said John De La Rose. Like, yeah, like a failed <laughs> riddle. <laughs> he has like two or three devote followers who yeah. helps him attack people on social yeah. media. Is that Mister and Mrs. Strange? <laughs> you know, <laughs> is that what makes him like terrible writers at the same time? Is that idea that you're gonna be like? I'm gonna like tell you something. I have the answers, and this is this is how. Like, if that's the way you wrote too, of course nobody liked you. I shit, think dude. that's the. I, I think that attitude contributes to being a bad writer. So if you feel like you have a message and you're better than everybody else, and all, you know this yeah, your truth, shit sucks like, already. You might as well write the fucking Bible, dude, because you, you know, know your everything. Shit sucks. Yeah, like you know? if someone says a bad thing about someone they write, it's oh, that's because they believe in the liberal agenda. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> But no, you just suck at writing. Yeah, it can be bad. You're a bad writer. <laughs> you're just preaching to me, dude. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. Two extreme fleas. Huh? <laughs> snowflakes. Is that what it's <laughs> Probably. What, why does everyone have something against snowflakes, man? I don't know, man. You'll be not that bad. I'd love to see a snowflake. I've never it seen it. It snowed like last year, man. It was great. It did snow, didn't it? Did it? Yeah. I don't know, if I ever see a snowflake, I'm I saw some snow cross. sludge. Dude, we had a. I mean, like, snow. what you see when you're a kid, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. like, something, snow. like, this big falling. You're like, wow. That's, that's what cool. we had last year. Where was I? I man? don't know. Was, was I working? Dude, was you nuts. had... You must have been working. I don't know, man. It snowed. I don't remember yeah. anything. I mean, I'm from Indiana, so, I mean, I know what snow is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh, what is this? For me, it was what? mythical, man. I'd never really seen snow. Like... I've never, I've never seen it snowing. Let's say yeah, that. Yeah, no one at my house had that. And like Dylan walked out and immediately slipped on his ass. He's like, "What's going on? <laughs> I hate God. <laughs> Why has this happened to me?" <laughs> what else? What else is there? What do you guys? You've, we've already talked about what you're working on now, right? Yeah. You have the magazine. When is that coming out? Do you know yet? I don't know. We got to talk Fuck. about it. Yeah. We're we got to come up with a theme. Maybe we could come up with a fucking theme. All right, what's the title? Dude, yeah. religion. The cult. Cults. Christian service word. Cults. cults. Hell yeah. Dude. Yeah. It seems like it has to be that. Yeah. Maybe. Is it going to be non-fiction, fiction? I think it'll be fiction, right? Yeah. Mostly fiction. Yeah, okay. Mostly fiction. I think we're going to mix in like an interview... Like do oh, man. some sort of like letters to the editor with or something else that we mentioned. Interview someone who's in a cult, dude. That would be fun. You should get well, Brian Evans. But who's gonna fucking who's gonna do that? Interview Brian Evanson. He do you know who he is? Uh-uh. You no. He's an amazing writer. I mean, he's written a lot of books. One was called uh, Last Days. Uh huh. But he's an ex Mormon. Okay. Oh really? Yeah, like he was kicked out. He laughed. He always talked shit about how. It's Basically a cult. Yeah. He used to, like, teach and shit. He would be a good guy to get. To interview? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. 
the only thing is framing it as a topic for writing. To yeah. to just say cults and throw it out to someone to write about. Well, I mean, ta- like... Tales from the cults. Gotcha. Cult to sack. <laughs> cult to sack. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But I like it. I like the idea of doing something about religion or cults or... Yeah. It would be fun for the visual art aspect of it all. Yeah. That's for sure. What are you doing? Me? Yeah. Uh, I... I mean, what are you writing? Uh, <laughs> I know what you're doing. I can uh, see you. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just masturbating. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Stop <laughs> that. Yeah, he, he's kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm doing something very solitary. No, no one can join in. But you're welcome to watch. Um, I, uh, you know, same old shit, man. I'm writing a bunch of stories. You still doing the road trip novel? Still doing it, yeah. Cool. Uh, it's uh, it's coming along. Although things have slowed down. Just Things so are always kind of slowing down. You're writing not... The Hangover 4? Or... No. What is the road trip only novel? road trip thing you know. <laughs> which, is, which is the exact same thing as the last three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, all yeah, all I do is copy the word. It just transcribed. Um, no, so basically these guys. Well, it actually involves a cult, basically. Oh man, I, I always I always have cults. So, but um, we, this the, this old couple is um, traveling to Las Vegas because they never had a, a proper honeymoon. Now that they're retired, they figure they should have a honeymoon. Um, um, they had they see a, something bouncing on the side of the road on their way, and it's they. they they decide to pick him up because he has no arms and no legs. So what harm could he possibly do to them? Okay. Uh, that's the beginning of the end for their whole road trip. But um, it should be fun. And then it also, there's a radio show that's always on because they're driving the whole time. So you, you, there's a snippets of this radio show, and it's a Alex Jones like character constantly kind of commenting with the uh, with the action. Nice. Um, there's a part. There's uh, I did a, actually with Bobby Hilliard. I went out to Houston for this. Uh, this writer, this brewery had writers over. It was me, Bobby, Lucas Mangum, John Kaminal, John Wayne Kaminal, and a couple other. Oh, Kelby Losack. And I actually read the first, like, first 500 to 600 words of the, uh, the story. Um, but, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the big thing I'm working on. But I'm also, like, shifting, shifting attention to different short stories and stuff like that constantly. How close are you to being done with it? Uh, not close. I probably have a couple more months. Nice. Yeah. Um, what is the biggest writing, publishing related regret that you have that you've done so far? You didn't ask me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, currently my first publisher is sitting in jail. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, he's in jail. What the I, fuck? What did he do? Uh, what did he do? <laughs> I actually don't know exactly what he did. What was he accused of? He was accused. What? He was accused and convicted. So yes, we can say it. Yeah. He's a he's a he's a pedophile. What? Yeah. What? Whoa. And I I always thought something was weird with these people, but at first, you know, when you when you submit your and that's how I actually got to know you is because he asked I'm you a for pedophile? a pedophile. Bl- <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. You looked at the registry yeah. and found you. Yeah. Oh, hey, look, Max put <laughs> another pedophile. An alternative duo trope. What? An alternative duo trope. Yeah, Pet trope. <laughs> <laughs> duo pedo. Um, no, but you, you actually he 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 asked you to blurb death thing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he didn't he didn't use it, but that's how I knew he who you were. It. He didn't use it. What the fuck? Because he's a fucking pedo. He has too much fucking. I was I'm a him. child. <laughs> Dude. I was like 19. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> was well, you were, you were legally an adult. Uh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> but uh, but that, that's how I got to know you. But, you know, the whole thing is they, they, they said they're going to pay royalties. And as soon as royalties were due for the first round of writers, which, yeah. like, whatever, I, it wasn't that much, anyways. It, it was kind of a lot, but it wasn't. It was a lot to me. But um, they started doing GoFundMes, like, our life's falling apart. We gotta run away because her ex husband is trying to do this and that. And it's just fucking crazy stuff. So I started thinking, okay, I'm never gonna get paid. That's okay though. That's okay. And just shit just fell apart from there. And I always thought something was weird about him because he always constantly like would email me and just talk about nothing. 
And I was like, dude, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. And for like a year after the, 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 the press had gone under, I was feeling kind of bitter and stuff. And, um, but he would still try to be like in the scene, you know? Yeah. And he would still try to be in the scene. And everyone had a bunch of goodwill towards him. But then someone posted that, God, who, oh, I heard it from Bobby. He was that he was in jail for molesting his kids or whatever, and you know. So I'm not the victim in that story. They're the victim in the story. Right. But that my biggest regret is not doing any research, but just like going with the first, you know, the first guy who gives me a kiss is like, all right, we're getting married yeah, and having you a couldn't, baby. You couldn't have known, right? I, I mean, know, you can't I predict know. shit like that. I found I found out. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's appropriate, but I found out later he didn't pay anybody, and like he actually blocked his artists. Of he, course it's appropriate. Bro, Fuck yeah. this guy. He molested his kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, Fuck he, that guy. Well, just just, just for the sake of the other people, the other people in the story. Oh, okay. okay. You know, but he, I, I heard that he blocked the artist who did like the, um, who did the cover art and stuff. Yeah, he did. He blocked yeah. him and didn't pay him and anything. And, and that, that part of the story didn't, I found out last, but I remember him saying, Hey, Andrew, um, if you make posters of of the death thing cover, uh, are you gonna cut me in? And can you not tell Dyer Wilk about it? What? And I was just like, okay, that means I'm not making posters because I'm not gonna cut you in, and I'm definitely <laughs> not gonna like keep it from the artist. You know, it was bizarre. But I had no idea what the purpose. What, what, I, so this was I, I didn't put death, these all together. This was a death thing. Yeah, yeah. So I had no idea what why this bizarre. I, I was too idiotic to put these things together that he wasn't paying the artist mm-hmm. whose name I just said on accident. <laughs> but uh, uh, ah, fuck it. yeah, but but then later His I would get Craig paid. McNilly. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say Dyer Will because <laughs> <laughs> Craig McNeely is a pedophile. He's in jail. He's he's in Louisiana and. May he be there for the rest yeah, of his life. As far as we know, yeah. Dyer's never molested anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Dyer's, we know. Dyer has absolutely not. Not accused, not convicted. Right. He has not been convicted at this time. <laughs> Dyer, Dyer Wilk, if you are listening, or anyone who knows Dyer Wilk is listening. Do not tell him. I'm so sorry about the confusion here. Dyer Wilk is a phenomenal artist and a good person. Craig T. McNeely is a bad person and not a great artist. And he's in jail because he's a fucking criminal. Yeah. No. And, you know, hopefully he stays there for the rest of his life. And that was your biggest regret. Biggest regret is just going well, with the something fir- that somebody else did. Well, I understand well, that. It's get, a lack of research because I've yeah. done that myself. Yeah. You know, and it's just someone said, oh, I want to publish your book. Because he asked me. You know, I wasn't submitting. I wasn't submitting really anywhere. He asked me, and I was like, whoa, hey, I'm a big boy now. Yeah. Um, you know, so, but... For you know, for whatever it's worth, like you know, yeah, whatever. I, obviously, I'm still beaten up by the whole thing. You kind of are. Yeah, I, I can yeah. see. You, yeah, I know. Well, because it's just like j- 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 just the severity of the crimes. You know, him not paying me. Okay, that's just like every other Dude, you know. murder would have been a better crime to commit. Oh yeah, totally. Like, it would have been. A, it wouldn't have hurt as much to say that one's just like yeah, it's intense. Unforgivable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally like, unforgivable. That's a tough one. But that's a tough one. You know, like he hasn't contacted me since he's been in jail. But I know that I know that he contacted. Okay. What? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, actually, um, so this is why Bobby should have been here. Was he? He, he wouldn't he, talk about it. He, I don't know, but we're gonna talk about it now. He. Uh, he sent me like a screenshot uh, of his email, yeah. and it was like, "This is the prison system, and this prisoner, right. Craig T. McNeely, would like to talk to you." And he's like, "Should I? Should I answer it?" I was like, "Man, I wouldn't fucking answer it. He's, he's a fucking." Pedophile. What's he gonna say to you? Yeah. Anyway, he's gonna be full of bullshit. Like, of course. Oh, I'm in. I'm I'm in jail because I got. No, dude, you're in jail because you deserve to be there. You know? Yeah. Are you I, saying that everyone in jail? No, 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 no. I'm saying him. There's a pattern of behavior that, that there's a pattern yeah. of behavior that fits. Yeah, yeah. The crime and you know me being me being a certified detective. Right. Uh, After all, that one time. Yep. You yep. were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. Got to the bottom. Of it. So fuck that guy. And wait, okay, in the name of the press, this is a big one. Double life press. Whoa. It's yeah. pretty fucked like up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa! That and, blows my right. mind. Double he also like had a poem published somewhere. I, I, cause I, I remember I was being so pissed off. I was like, I remember this motherfucker wrote a poem. It's like it's this really long poem, and it's really bizarre. It's like about dogs barking behind them. It's just like, 
It's, so, it's almost like he's... Uh, do you think it makes it worse that he created art, right? No, I mean, he didn't create art. He published art, basically. Well, I mean, I guess the poem was creating art. But... What's it? <laughs> <laughs> was it, though? Is a poem ever he, he published yeah. some good books, too. Yeah. 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 So Death, he had good Death Thing. Yeah, he had, he, he had great taste. He had great taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100% certified pedophilia, pedophilia fresh. <laughs> oh, oh, what God. about you, Trey? Uh, the only thing, I've never been published. Right, but you mean to the magazine. Than, but the magazine, yeah. my only regrets like, with that great. Yeah. is that uh, everything, I've, I don't know. So you're it was, Yeah, that's my <laughs> biggest regret is that I'm still harboring that. Um, secret. <laughs> the main, no longer a secret. <laughs> my, uh, right, the, the, main, the main regret <laughs> was like, uh, it was really fun at first and it was super, because it was super fresh. Yeah. And it was fun to just kind of like piece everything together. Like I remember the goal every single month, I'm going to put this magazine out. Yeah. And I think that's my regret is kind of confining it to like, I had to put it out. And I had to put it out within a month. And I had to keep everybody in, involved. Mm -hmm. But it's submission-based, ultimately, right? Yeah. So when people don't aren't submitting as much, they're like, dude, fuck your magazine this month, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like putting together anything I could to make the issue come out instead of being like, I'm going to create some like high-quality stuff, make sure it's super legit before I put it out. And I think ultimately it led to a little bit of like, dissatisfaction on my part and probably yeah. like other people could sense that too so i think really just creating rules about it so so much that that makes sense like it had to happen then it had to be every single month because the main thing was to keep people engaged that was the idea about it right yeah but if you're just like putting your own shit in there to make it even big enough to to put it out yeah you're like nah man maybe i need to abandon that idea altogether yeah. so well it's also exhausting Putting, that's the other yeah. thing too and monetarily if you're putting 200 bucks in it every single month you're like nah I'm gonna lose interest really quick yeah like, especially if I'm not making 205 dollars back yeah exactly it and I didn't want it to yeah. be about that but it you gotta like set it like yeah that. you gotta set it up at least so it's self sustaining so you don't have to worry about that every right. single time so I think this next one being every four months we'll like make sure the quality is up there yeah we're gonna pay people for stories we're gonna pay people for art great and uh do it every four months that way we could have a show every single time yeah we, we could still. do a release every month is just too time consuming how could you ever do any promotion yeah no and i wasn't yeah, yeah. i it's wasn't like, it's like by the time you get one down it's like okay time to begin the next one yeah yeah, yeah there's no there was no prom promotion at all it was just like and then it kind of got to the point where anybody could submit because I didn't set, you're not paying anyone, right? Yeah. So, and I wanted to get the word out that people were welcome, mm -hmm. but I decided to do an all poetry one mm -hmm. issue. This is your last one you're working on. It's not going to happen. Oh, you're not going to do I'm it? I'm not going to do it. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I'm not going to do news. it. That's news. So Breaking who, news. Who, all right. So maybe I got six poems, right? Yeah. Whoever gave me a poem, I just sent him an email. Sorry, the issue's not happening. But... We're going to have a show. If you want to come do a reading of your poem, yeah, you're more than welcome. Like, oh, I'll hold the floor for you. But Hoping no one does that, though, right? Hoping no one. <laughs> no, I, I, like, I, hope, I hope some people take that invitation. But I know that most of them wouldn't, right? So you're kind of like yeah. putting it out there. Like, if, if you want to do it, this is my consolation. Like, yeah. I'll give you the space so people could see it or hear it or whatever. But that was... The downfall trying to do poetry only. Yeah, wow. It was <laughs> bad. Was, it was a bad stuff. That was a that was a downfall right there. I was like, nah, man. This is what am I doing? What, what about you, Max? Things? No regrets. You have no regrets. <laughs> you bet you can have a no regret regrets. in two weeks. You do the Castle Rock Radio every week. Oh man, I don't know. I have two already done, so give me three weeks. All right, All right cool. <laughs> I don't know, man. Kind of similar to you, minus the pedophilia. <laughs> There's a lot of going with anyone who says, yeah, I'll publish this. Yeah. And not thinking about what that could mean for me. Not as Going with presses, I don't pay anything. Yeah. Uh, my first book came out when I was 19. It was a collection. Yeah. 
from some Australia micro press. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, it's no longer on print because yeah. it was awful. It's just the writing wasn't ready to be published yeah. yet. So I'm glad no one else can read that now. Yeah. That's a big regret. I what, wish... was the, what was the name of the anthology? Uh, it was called True Stories Told by a Lyle. Nice. Which is a great title. Yeah. I might use it again. Yeah. I might be able to find it, dude. True Stories Told by told a Lyle. By a liar. You probably can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that it was out of print, but, you know. I, I emailed him, like, two years after the fact, like, facts, like, hey, let's stop selling this. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. Yeah. Do you have the right? Can you say that? Yeah, I have the right to. You could be like, look, no, no more. I mean, I they could have said no. We're going to still publish it, but right. they were like, yeah, it's not, it's not selling anyway. Yeah, right. Jeez. Um, the last book I did, the Nightly Disease, that was a big cluster fuck. It was published by a press called Dark Views, and I haven't been paid at all yet. They went bankrupt, and I never received a dime. They ended up just ripping off everybody they published. The year I decided to sign with them. Before that, they were a pretty good press, so I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I heard about that on that on the podcast of Brian Keane. Yeah. So what do you do? What do you do with all those books? Like the well, they the, printed books, they have the rights to the books. Well, it's, are they it's, still selling the books no. and getting the money off of them? Well, it's print on demand, work? so I mean. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And with the nightly disease. The press shut down completely, so they don't sell anything now. So I got the rights back, and I self-published it through my own press. Nice. Because no one else is going to be like, yeah, I'm going to publish this book that you just released six months ago. Yeah. Yeah, because it came, it, they shut down six months after the book came out. Damn. It's bad timing. And that book, the, that book is fucking great too. Thank you. Did you bring a copy? Did you bring a copy? I have some in my trunk. Yeah, from yes. the. I never took him out from the show we did. Oh, nice, okay. I just, cool. I'm glad that happened. Yeah. You did that so that I could have one of those copies. Well, we got to get another thing going in in Austin or you know the surrounding it's area. A telethon. No, the telethon. Well, the telethon. Yeah, but I wanted to. That is absolutely going to happen. Yeah, no, that, that, no, that's going to happen. Gonna Dude, it, gonna if, a, if he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's going to take a lot of preparation yeah. because we have to write right. material that For lasts a whole fucking day. A whole day, yeah. And how are we going to broadcast that? Well, I think we can live stream it. Yeah, yeah. Right. we could definitely yeah. live stream it. The only thing is about YouTube. We couldn't get <laughs> anyone to hold a fucking camera that yeah, whole time. a tripod. We're gonna have pos- a tripod. We have to position yeah. it and make it happen that way where it'll just fucking... Someone so, will be showing. I do have a tripod. So but there you go. Nice. Does it, does any of us on YouTube have 100 subscribers? I have like 60. Okay. <laughs> so basically, you're gonna, you're gonna have to use yours because we have to get to 100 subscribers. Oh. In order okay. to live stream. I see. Yeah. We could do that. I've yeah. never once advertised it. Yeah. So. There we go. What is it? No, no, no. The, the, to, to live stream on yeah, YouTube, yeah. you have well, to. Have I mean, a, what is this YouTube channel? Well, is this anybody just, has YouTube channel? Oh, it's just called Perpetual Motion Machine. It's yeah. gotcha. a small press one yeah. because I upload the podcast simultaneously on YouTube as well. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So we just need to get 100 subscribers. That way we can live stream on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the idea of the tele- telethon is fucking awesome, though, because. Do you want to do a live audience? Sorry for interrupting. A live audience? Yeah. Yeah, that would be so. fucking awesome. Cool. We have to pay some stooges to sit there for twenty four hours. Well, no, like, uh, <laughs> dude, we know we could con our girlfriends into doing, it, our wives into doing it. Um, not girlfriends and wives. <laughs> I'm not married, so I said girlfriend, but uh, con them into doing it. We have some people that'll do it. Yeah. You have some yeah. invisible dogs. In this invisible in, dogs. We could have a segment. Life. Invisible yes. dog tricks. Get your goddamn dog <laughs> off my lawn. Dude, yeah. there we go. Dude, like selling the fucking leash. Yeah. Like, this actually. Leash, right? <laughs> Throw it up. Like, Oops, killed the dog. <laughs> but here's the leash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. That, so that's the next thing we're having. Well, I, I want to do something that's like, not monthly, because monthly is hard to do. Yeah. Every four months, man. Every four months, just have a show. Every Four, week. Three times a year. <laughs> Every week. Three times a year. So how often because are we going to be so doing this uh, Taco Summit? Man, I don't know. We've been trying to do episode one since November. Yeah, I know, but we finally, I mean, we, we put it together. We're going to get, get those guys to come on. Um, we're gonna I would get, say monthly. Monthly? Yeah. It's Especially true. if sometimes you come out to San Antonio. Oh, yeah, I definitely will. Because the, the, it's always difficult for me because I do the night shifts. Yeah. So I sleep between 10 and 3 o'clock usually because yeah. I, I pick up kids in the yeah. evening. Yeah. 
so just the sleep going around the sleeping schedule is always difficult to yeah. drive out to Austin yeah, yeah. oh yeah well, I'll definitely Austin come out to San Antonio um but yeah the telethon thing so set a date right now three months from now three months no, <laughs> no can't be three months um Halloween can't oh, be Halloween one I was thinking shorter you think it's shorter than three months? Yeah. Oh, fucking crazy! I was thinking it's no. shorter than three months. April. April. That's dude. That's next. That's next month. Yeah. Let's do it on four twenty. Four twenty. Dude, the four twenty smokeathon, dude. <laughs> twenty. The four Four twenty four. You gotta think about four twenty four hours. Well, let's look at a calendar. I mean, we gotta think about what day of the week it is. That that's okay. It, that's the biggest thing. It could be. Right. It could be on the twenty fourth if it's not. <laughs> you know what? It's even fu- it's fucking funnier if you do a 420 special when it's not on 420. Yeah. If you did it on my like stream. 424. Or 413. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like before or after. That makes it that much more awesome. Like I know um, Saturdays would be best for me. Saturdays, Saturdays, okay. Yeah, because I'm off on Friday nights and Saturday nights. Okay. Cool. I'll be able to switch things around probably on a Saturday. You don't work Saturday. Yeah, but I, I, cl- I will open on Sunday. So. Yeah. Saturdays. So wait, are you, are you are you Trey's boss? Technically, no, nah, we're in a way. Yeah, in a he, way, is, you are. Is yeah. he a dick? There are days when he's. But here's he's the thing, boss. Trey. Trey is actually the person who taught me how to be in the service industry. And I, I'd never worked like at a restaurant or a bar. Yeah. He kind of taught me everything that I knew because I was just some idiot. like, oh, I work at a bookstore and I'm poor, and he just kind of like helped me do it. And then he moved to Portland, and uh, I just became other Trey. You know, he, Trey was always a guy. I didn't know this, but you, but you were just like, I always, basically, you did everything. You know, threw kegs around. You're just totally, you know, the, the, the everywhere guy. You told me how, you taught me how to do that, and then came back, and I was like, hey, welcome back, bitch, and I'll scrub those toilets. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys know like radio? radio? Yeah, 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 yeah. We were the first closing crew. So yeah. basically, the first night, me and him worked together, and then the second night, we worked together. Um, so we were basically the first, the first closing crew. Yep. And it's in a base, it's still that way, kind of. We're still yeah, a closing crew. That's true. Are you there? And he gave me toilet stories from outer space. What? Yeah. I was back in those days. We had a chat book. <laughs> and that yeah. was it. Are you the only two like creative types who no. work at radio? No, no, no a lot like of people. Like I've been, well, there's a ton of people who are creative. Jack Parker? Jack, that's true. Yeah, but how many employees do we have? Like 20, 20 something? Yeah. Is everybody in Austin a creative type? Um, no, 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 I wouldn't say that. All right, I think that the, to be our age and work in the service industry in Austin, I think most of the people who yeah. are our age working service yeah. do have some something else that they do on the side. Yeah. I definitely noticed that a, like a difference between like who well, I'm looking at and Cibolo, yeah, and Austin. Like, no one really gives a shit about books or writing or anything, really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I feel maybe, like most yeah. most people that we work, comparatively speaking, yeah, in Austin, I would say most people are creative types. But that being said, I think there's a small percentage of people in Austin that actually produce. Right. Right. Yeah. So there's, a, and I think that's true everywhere. Yeah, definitely. There's a ton of people who are like, "Oh, this is what I do," and it never leaves their notebook. It never leaves their computer, garage never leaves band. Their brain. Right. It never leaves yeah. their brain. Oh, whatever. If only I had enough time. Exactly. Yeah, that kind of thing. If the I had actual a perfect like, office. I'd actual be working, my book right now. Working artists that I know are like a handful of yeah. people yeah. who are like actually, unless it's their profession, like tattooer. I know tattooers that yeah. do their thing, but who's working a job, who are working a job outside the arts and producing art on the side. Yeah, three, four, five people that's that I know of, and that's kind of what I want this podcast to be: is to feature those types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get like what they do out there. Yeah, right. And also they get free tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get free tacos. Yeah, and I appreciate that because I am the worst at promoting this way. I feel like I'm really good with the handshakes and yeah, 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 and being like, "Hey, what's up? How's it going? This is what's happening." But to reach a broader audience, no way. Yeah. I'm the worst. I'm the absolute worst at that. So when the new magazine comes out, are you going to remain just local? Or are you going to? Do you have a website you'll do? A, a I don't know. Well, this is Andrew and I are doing this together. Oh, this is a, this is the one-two punch of. I hope Andrew 
can take the lead on all those things. Because, yeah, the interweb. It's called Deer Man now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's going to that's what's gonna happen. You can only read the angle Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, really just having a partner that you could write with. I know you guys are working on something together, right? Yeah, supposedly. We are. Yeah. Still happening. If you guys do not, I'm make doing that my happen, research. Okay, I'm gonna be <laughs> fucking pissed because that was the funniest fucking story I've ever heard read. We'll read all of it. Ever telethon. Every, the book from beginning to end. Dude, that's another good idea because I don't feel I don't feel about thirty minutes, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be fucking awesome. It's gonna be bizarre because it's gonna be at a business that has normal operating hours, right? Yeah. From like seven to nine, seven in the morning till nine at night. 10 at night. Now, will we like be accepting it, actual money? <laughs> we yes. are, but people are going to... The thing is, people are going to know who are there. Yeah. The fact... We're going to frame it like your money is helping to conserve cockroaches. So if someone yeah. doesn't fucking know that that's fake... They deserve to be... They deserve... <laughs> we deserve their fucking money we anyway. Have phone lines and shit? Yeah, we yeah. should have phone lines. If we should maybe get a fake phone. Th- that should be yeah. a skit itself. Yeah. Just like having all game minutes in the phone. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> this is not dominoes. Just, <laughs> off, just off to the side, like yeah. having someone answer phones yeah. at random times. Like, I want there to be a million things going on. Yeah, this is gonna be great. Yeah, it's good. I think it's it's gonna gonna cost a lot of money. It's gonna be good. I think we have to wait till May though. April. I think we have to wait till May. April. April's too close. April's way too close. Let's wait till May. May. I am trying to buy a house right now, so maybe we'll wait till May. I'm living with my girlfriend's parents. All right, can we talk about this real quick? Can we do this while this is on? Talk about what? I want to know what his experience is like with the in-laws when you lived. You lived with Nina's parents, right? Oh, it was great. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Barker. Hi. It was great. <laughs> that's it? That's like, that's, that's a non-answer, dude. Oh, it was great. What were some of the, cha- what were some of the challenges? <laughs> you know, right now. What I'm was sure. your sex life like when Wait. you were living with the in-laws? You know, like, here's what's happening beach, in my brain right now. My brain is going, um, about Colin Blank. <laughs> I'm trying to answer you. Yeah, uh... Man, I want to know. You help me out as a friend. I'm trying. To- as a friend, yeah. Uh, depends on how big your room is, how you know, and you, you. No matter how great everything is, your relationship with everybody is. Um, you're always gonna feel like you have to like like like. You're Wash guest, your like you're a guest in someone's house, which you I are. Think is healthy right, to feel right. that way. You but need also, to feel but also, you're gonna feel very self conscious about every time you come and go. You know, yeah, you so you don't want to bother anybody. I've thought about that shit. You know? just closing the door because yeah. I like my fucking alone time, yeah. right? But, go, but her mom doesn't work, so she's home a lot, and I think she likes the idea of us being around, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to, if it's like an everyday kind of thing, like <laughs> hang out or shut something. the fuck up, <laughs> mom. <laughs> like, go shut, and not be a diss if I go in the room and like shut the door and like. Read and take a nap and do my own thing. Uh, it, it won't be a diss that way. I'm sure right. they'll understand that. But the thing is, you will be very conscious of that. The you 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 think you'll get used to it or you know get over yeah. it, but I never got over it. Yeah. The the one thing that that was great was um, they were out of town, like they were out of the country for like three months. Whoa. Um. So Whoa. right. So that's that's, awesome. so so that was different. But yeah. at the same time, you just you just you're a guest in somebody's house and yeah, you know, you know that you're inconveniencing them. Yeah, and so you know, you can't really. You just gotta wash those dishes. You can't really man. scream while you're taking a shit and whacking it anymore. <laughs> you kind of just gotta silently say, "I love myself." Yeah, you know, just whisper to yourself. Is that what you say as you do it? I, 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 I love myself. It. I love myself. <laughs> I'm a beautiful human being. It's a mantra. Would you fuck me? <laughs> <laughs> I am fucking me. <laughs> as yeah. is Apple right now. <laughs> shit. Well. It's awesome. We're out of tacos. So. We're out of chips. We've been out since like 10 minutes we, in. We yeah. still have queso though. Yeah. Well, I'm not. And a bunch of hot sauce that you're going to have to eat later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will. Or Max can take it back on the long trip to San Antonio and it'll be mm-hmm. nice. nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Cool. Like that went well. This we, was fun. We talked about pedophilia. We talked about cults. Yeah. We talked yeah. about um, jacking off in front of in laws. Uh, yeah. Around. Not around. around. <laughs> like you will. Around. Circle yeah. Yeah. Like hey, hey, Andrew, I'm trying to read here. <laughs> look at me. Look you at have me. to circle me. <laughs> Can't you just me. pick a spot? spot. Yeah, man, someone, yeah. not, that is not what a circle jerk is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was experimenting, dude. I, I learned about it on the dark web. Yeah. A circle jerk. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, how can we all? How can the audience find all of us? Um, you can you, you can find me at hilbertheckler.com or dearmanbegins.com. My Twitter is at uh, a hilbert three thousand. And uh, you uh, could uh, you could find me five days a week at Radio Coffee and Beer on South Menchaca <laughs> or yeah, selling tacos email? for Taco Deli. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I have an email. Yeah. Uh, it's tradegihudson at gmail.com. If you want a preliminary, just be like, dude, uh, I like whatever you talked about and I want to submit to the upcoming magazine, whatever the issue is. And if you have an answer, out. if you have an answer. About oh, yeah. That. You know what? If suggestions for what the theme should be for yeah. the first magazine. And if you have, open to suggestions. If you live with your in-laws, tell yeah. us how that is. Yeah. yeah. Any tips? Yeah. And I that could go tips. on the letters to the editor of the first. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Write a letter Something to the editor. about the in-laws. Fucking around in laws. <laughs> Stroking your penis while circling your in laws. See, that's a very literal. That's gonna be a big headline. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the title. Austin. Uh, this is a Taco Summit. Colon blank. If anyone, you know what? If anyone, Stroking it around if your in laws. If anyone has anything to say about this, about colon blank too, let me know. Yeah. yeah what is, what does that mean? We, if if you know what the fuck he's minutes. talking about, and this isn't some fucking Russian code for like activating the robots, let me know. <laughs> All right, and I'm, I'm at talesfromthebooth.com, and you can tweet at me at give me your teeth. And. Nice. This has been the Taco Summit. Thank you for listening. Thank you.